All right, everybody, welcome back to the number one television program in the history of the entire universe. I am Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon, The Blackest Heart, and The Lonesome Crown, all three books published by Simon & Schuster's Saga Press. Today I'm going to be reviewing Legacy of the Sword by Jennifer Rob Robertson. Um, this is book number three in her Chronicles of the Chesu Lee series. It's a fantasy series about the Chesu Lee magic users, shapeshifters, people that can talk and converse with all manner of animals. A uh, very popular series in the 80s. Um, this one came out in 1986. I have previously read and reviewed on the channel book number one, Shape Changers, and book number two, The Song of Homana. And let's talk about the covers first, because you know I love graphic design and cover illustration. Um, this is an illustration done by Julek Heller. I really like it. Um, I, I dig it quite a bit. Um, not only that, but I love the yellow edges on the old-time paperbacks. You know, let's see. This, this one doesn't have the yellow edge. These two do. But back in the day, I used to love the yellow edges for some reason on the old paperbacks. But this is a great cover. All the covers look great. In fact, they all sort of match in style. The, the spines match. You can see here the rest of the series. There's like, uh, God, I don't know how many books there are in the series, but this is all of them. And as you can see, they all sort of match. Um, so that's good. Let's see, there's one, two, three, four, five, eight books in the series. So let's put these two here, over here. We are talking, no, that's not the one. Ah, gosh dang it, which one are we reviewing? We're reviewing book three, Legacy of the Sword. I like the scroll work along the edges of each of the book, and it wraps around, and you got the scroll work here. Book covers were just so much cooler um, back in the 80s and 90s and 70s, and even early 2000s. Now they've just turned into... Photoshop horse shit. Anyway, okay. There's a map in here of the fantasy land that we're dealing with. Uh, pretty cool. Okay, so um, I'm just going to read the back to begin with, and then we'll talk about some of the details without giving away spoilers, of course. Um, so, third book of the series. Beasts or sorcerers? What are the Chesu Lee? Should they be feared or revered? Should we hunt them or treat them as neighbors? That's pretty much the theme of the entire series. Because the Chesuli are witches, shape changers. Okay, for decades, the magical race of shape changers called the Chesuli have been feared and hated exiles in their own land, a land they rightfully should rule. Victims of a vengeful monarch's war of annihilation and and a super king's tyrannical reign, the Chesu Lee clans have nearly vanished from the world. Now, in the aftermath of the revolution which overthrew the hated tyrant, um, Prince Donal is being trained as the first Chesu Lee in generations to assume the throne. But will he be able to overcome the prejudice of a populace afraid of his special magic? and succeed in uniting the realm and its life and death battle against enemy armies and evil magicians. Okay, that's what it says on the back. Um, so when we start the book, we are right into the perspective of Prince Donal and his wolf companion, Lorne, and his golden falcon companion, Taj. He can speak to them even over great distances. Um, Donal is one of the Chesu Lee, of course. Like it describes on the back, these guys have been the Chesu Lee race of cha shape changer magic users have been hunted, banned, um, threatened, treated with scorn, cast out of society. Anyway, we meet Donal in the opening scenes. He's entering a town called Honrath, and he's immediately treated with suspicion. Um, whilst he's there, he picks up a a travel companion named Seth, a young street urchin, a young boy, and he also picks up another travel companion later in the 
beginnings of the book named Aislin, who is a young, a young Homanan woman of a young girl of um, that we kind of, I mean, there's a lot of ties. This is a, and at this point, I won't say a whole lot more because we enter in to war and a tangled web of human versus Chesu Lee relationships. Um, who comes out on top? Uh, it's, it's basically old time. I don't want to say old time because it's not old time. I was reading these when I was a kid, um, which would make me old time. It's 80s fantasy. It's it's cool. It's very the magic. The magic system is very pagan like sorcery. Um, nothing like way over the top. It's it's got just witchcraft, shape changers, sort of uh, you know guy people that can change shape. Well, you know what shape changers are. People who can talk to animals. Um, and it's just one of my favorite series. And Jennifer Robertson's writing is just top notch throughout the whole series and throughout everything she's done. I have probably 90% of her books in my collection. Um, and book three continues on the saga of the Chesu Lee, which is eight books long, and um, does a good job of just creating a great old time fantasy novel. Um, simple, yet grim. Characters that you root for um, some bad characters, intertangled webs of plot and character. Uh, like I said, Aislinn, uh, the young girl. I won't give a spoiler of who she is or who she's related to and stuff like that. But um, anyway, I liked this third book quite a bit. As probably so far, I would say, um, just due to memory, because I've read all these once and I'm just rereading them. I don't remember much about them from when I was a kid. But I would say of the three that I've reread now as an adult, I would say this one's probably, you know, because this was the first book she ever wrote. Uh, and it was good. And then the second book was a little better. I get, and then it just gets better. Let's just say the series gets better as it goes. I'm going to give this a 9 out of 10. I think it's pretty darn good for a, a reread of an old fantasy classic that I loved. 